Hey, what's happening everybody? Appreciate you tuning back into another video. I'm going to try and make this one pretty quick, but uh, to the point, I'm going to get into trading view. We're going to talk about the USDT settings for profit trailer and PT feeder and kind of how we can prepare ourselves for an inevitable bounce. And then maybe even for the floor to kind of fall out underneath us and, and maybe we drop to another lower level in Bitcoin. So right now we're sitting at $7,373. Um, it's pretty clear that we're in kind of no man's land in Bitcoin. A lot of traders are, are kind of up in the air. You know, what, where, where's this going? Are we going up or down? What's next? And, uh, you know, I'm not going to get too far into the Bitcoin fundamentals in this video, but, um, you know, that, that's definitely something that we need to keep in mind, especially if you're swing trading uh, manually or if you're doing this with a trading bot. So before I dig into the settings, I want to announce uh, one thing. So I'm going to be giving away $100 worth of Bitcoin to one lucky subscriber. And basically the, the requirements are you just got to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're trying to grow this as fast as possible. So just leave a thumbs up if you like the video. Um, leave a comment if you want as well. But basically the main requirement is just subscribe to the YouTube channel and then you got to join the Discord group, which the link is in the description of this video and I'll be announcing the winner in there. So if you don't join the Discord group, you're definitely not gonna win. <laughs> um, but yeah, you gotta subscribe to both. You gotta jump into both. So anyway, we'll just jump right in. So like I said, um, we're kind of in no man's land with Bitcoin. Um, basically my view on doing a USDT settings is a couple of things. One is if you go into Binance or Bittrex or whatever, if you're gonna trade USDT pairs, there's only about 10 pairs that you can trade. So it's generally the big dogs, it's generally the big boys. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin Cash, EOS, Litecoin, Cardano, um, and then there's maybe one or two or three more, right? So if you go into Binance, you can look at the different pairs. And the reason I like that is because these guys are definitely going to be sort of leading the pack. Um, I know Bitcoin generally leads the charge when we see a bullish reversal. So if, if you're kind of of the opinion that we might see a bounce relatively soon, or maybe we're seeing it sort of right now, or, or you know, maybe we'll see it in a week. But if you're of that opinion, um, the problem with trading Bitcoin pairs is that you may end up in bags because Bitcoin is rising in value faster than the altcoins that you traded for, right? So that becomes kind of an issue. And, you know, we can kind of adjust our settings if you have PT feeder and that, that definitely helps. But my thought is getting these USDT settings ready for when I feel the market has sort of reversed and we're going to be going into a, a bit more of a bullish trend. Everybody's been talking about you know, oh, May is the, the month or even April is the month. And we're going to go into this bullish bull run over the summer. We're all going to make a ton of money. Well, it hasn't happened yet. And, and we may see another another low before we sort of hit that reversal point. But using USDT pairs is you have less variables. You know, Bitcoin fluctuates in value all the time, whereas Tether sits at roughly $1 all the time. So you don't have to worry about that variable where Tether is getting gaining in value and or, or losing value. You don't have to worry about that. So that, that makes it nice when we do start to see a bullish reversal, then all of the other coins will be gaining in value compared to Tether. And that is the idea. You want to, to, to make money. <laughs> so um, that's, that's my outlook. How am I going to be playing this? So we'll kind of jump into this and then I'm going to go over a little bit of news on Coindesk. There's a couple cool articles that we'll go over at the end, but real quick. So basically this is the ADA USDT chart. And basically what I've decided is I've only changed a few things. I've changed the indicators. Um, I'm going to be using EMA gain and I'm going to use the stochastic RSI to be buying. Um, there's a few ways that you can play this. There's actually unlimited ways you can play this with how many um, different buying and selling strategies Profit Trailer has with version 2.0. But I'm going to be playing the simple two buy strategy. I'm going to be going down. I'll, I'll just kind of get into it. I'm basically, I got rid of all the sell only mode coins um, pretty much because there's only 10 coins that you can trade with USDT pairs. So that's simple, very self explanatory. We can kind of breeze through all this stuff. The indicators is where it gets important. And we have it right here. So this might be contrary to popular belief, or maybe this is something that, you know, some people won't agree with. 
but I'm using the EMA candles, the, the five minute candles. So as you can see, we're on the five minute candles. And then we're also looking at the EMA fast is going to be a four period and the EMA slow is only going to be a seven period. And the reason for that is when you back test this a little bit, you can see that if you're using EMA gain, you're going to take the lowest of the two EMA lines and measure beneath. That would be your buying opportunity. So we see a buying opportunity right in here, which is about negative 1.35%. The problem is, and you know, there's a couple other ones in here. If you're in a bull market, maybe you adjust your settings and I'll, I'll get into that in a second, but you're seeing some buying opportunities. But if you use a larger, uh, fast or slow EMA, so if you use the slow EMA as a seven, normally I think I have this set to about 24, but if you look at this, you're going to see there's almost zero buying opportunities in a bullish run up like this. And if I'm going to use profit trailer to kind of do my automated selling when I'm still doing my, my trading, my day trading on my, my manual accounts, but I'm, if I'm going to use profit trailer, I want to be able to take part in some of these 22% gains in, in a day or two. Right? So I want there to be buying opportunities in this area. Now, now from a trading, a swing trading or technical analysis point of view, you probably wouldn't want to buy in here. But if I can zone in profit trailer settings to give me good buying opportunities, then that's what I want to do. So I'm going to leave that at seven. And that's why it's so close is because it gives me opportunities to buy in the upswing. And then we also sort of protect yourself in the downswings uh, by being such such a fast EMA gain that we're using. Um, there, there are definitely areas where you, you will probably be buying on down downward slopes and we can get into that but how i protect myself from that and these settings is using the stochastic rsi and making sure that we're not overbought and we're buying in a bad situation so let's continue forward um, i'm going to be using the stochastic rsi five minute candles 14 period and so on and so forth um, a lot of people have been asking me in the discord you know, why are you using the stochastic RSI? Don't you think that there's too many uh, signals or too many alerts that are be give, given out based on this? And, and they're completely valid arguments. Like that's a very valid argument. You look at this, this is approaching overbought, then oversold, then overbought, then oversold, then overbought. And it's just going up and down and up and down. But to me, looking at these stochastic RSI is saying, hey, this is good. As long as they're good buying signals, then or good signals in general, good selling signals, if you're going to use it for selling, then I'm okay with it being very frequent. And, and I almost want it more frequent because that's the whole point that I'm using profit trailer for is I want this thing to be cranking out buys and sells as long as they're, they're getting in good buying positions. And that that's all up to us to, to kind of hone in these settings to make sure that they are what we want. So initial cost percentage, I increased this to five because there's less trading pairs. Um, you know, I have, this is all very standard. Um, I just changed my, my buy strategy from, from like low BB and all this stuff. It's EMA gain at negative 0.9%. And then I'm using the stochastic RSI at a buy value of 0.15, which you can see, I drew three trend lines here, which signify the buying strategy values for the stochastic RSI. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, my, my sell strategy is very simple. It's gain. When, when I'm in these USDT settings, I want this to sell as soon as it's getting up above 1% and I'll use the trailing profit to try and capture extra, get a little extra juice on that trade. But if it gets above 5%, I'm using max profit. I'm getting out of a trade. It's just my personal opinion. You can use, there's, like I said, there's a ton of different ways you can play this market. If you wanted to, you could probably just use the stochastic RSI without the EMA gains and probably catch some pretty nice returns. Because if you look at this, you know, you're seeing oversold or overbought here. So it gets dumped and then it gets back up into the overbought and then it gets dumped again all the way down to the oversold territory in the RSI. And if you're just playing those swings, you're going to see nice returns. You, if you were playing that swing from 20 to 80, you would have sold at like a two, two and a half percent gain somewhere in that region. So, you know, the same thing can be said from top to bottom here where it hits from overbought to oversold the same idea. It would have dropped another 1% and you probably would have bought in down here and then you would have gone 
all the way up into this range at a 3%. So as you can see, there's many ways you can play this. I'm going to use the standard gain value for selling. Um, let's see, let's move on down to the market conditions. Okay, one other thing I want to get into that I get a lot of questions in the Discord is DCA and DCA stop loss triggering. So I'm going to use a DCA stop loss in this uh, USDT settings. If you don't want to use this, just take this line out. Um, it's very important. I'll comment this out before I, I put this up on the, the, the GitHub. But a lot of people are saying, oh, my DCA buy triggers aren't being triggered in my DCA and the stop loss isn't working. Well, the problem with that is, is it depends on your DCA buy strategies. So I'm actually making my DCAs buying a little bit easier than my normal buying. And that the reason for that is when it hits these trigger values, I actually want it to buy more often than I, than not. And whether or not that's that's really a good idea is up for debate. Um, the, the best way to get your bot to buy at these levels is to use Anderson Double Down because Anderson Double Down is more of a, a dumbed down indicator. It's not very smart like the stochastic RSI or the RSI or the low BB or the EMA gain. It basically is telling your bot to purchase at a set negative price point. And that's all it's doing. Once your bot notices that your coin value is negative 2%, it's going to double down your bet at that price. And that's, that's great. You know, that it gets you in and out of these trades quick. And for a stop loss trigger, that might be the way to go. Um, I'm going to test it out with a little more aggressive DCA buying strategy. The same strategies that I'm using in default, just higher buy values, um, a little bit easier to get in and out of trades. So that's, that's my idea. Um, and, and, you know, I'm still going to end up with some bags that go deeper than, than four or 5% and they haven't DCA all the, all the way down because these, these DCA buy values are not always going to get triggered, um, at the given price points. So I hope that makes sense. The market conditions, this is very simple. You know, you guys can go through this and just see what I'm looking at, but I'm making it a little more difficult in a bear market. I'm making it pretty simple and a boring. It's using the same settings up top. And then in a bull market, I'm using a little bit easier to get into a buy. That way we can kind of ride out these uptrends and make sure that we're actually getting into decent buying opportunities in here. So as you can see, this may not reach all the way down to a negative 0.9, but it reaches down further than 0.45 and that would mean that would signal a buying area if this rsi stochastic rsi was on the lower end but it wasn't so we wouldn't end up buying here um, you may end up buying in this range down here actually so this may be a good spot yeah so this probably would have been a buying opportunity at negative 0.56 so as you can see you can still catch pretty decent returns and, and, you know, hopefully you can trail all the way up. So with that said, the nice thing about this coin desk, we're just going to get into the news. I hope that, uh, I hope that all this USDT settings, I just briefly went over it. I didn't want to like harp on it, but comment in the discord, comment on the video. If you think that there's any holes in the strategy, I'm always open to changing things around. And I, I really like hearing about all of your new strategies. You know, if you want to change the indicator length or the buy candle, whatever you want to change all this stuff in different market conditions, that's a really cool idea. Um, another guy in discord came up with a cool idea to, um, create a, a grouping, a coin grouping for when Bitcoin drops or rises in value really quick. So that way, you know, you can, tell your bot to buy those coins. So I thought that was cool. We're just going to briefly go over these two bits of news. So basically there's a $30 million crypto startup fund that was launched by a global a mobile game maker. So this is actually really cool. Um, it says, we decided to create a fund that enables us to emerge more directly with early stage blockchain and cryptocurrency startups in order to be more effective partners and have real impact in the market. Um, they like early stage companies, they invest in equity or tokens, they like financial services, they like game technologies, and we believe there's a strong connection between gaming and crypto. So this is what I wanted to, to go over is there is a huge market in the gaming, like the gaming market is massive. And so if we can see these two merge, this could be a really big opportunity for us as investors to get into to some of these coins that kind of merge these two markets. So that's really exciting. 
And then also this one, headphone maker is quietly planning a $300 million ICO. So this ICO actually really interested me and not from an investment standpoint, but sort of just from like a business structure standpoint from behind the scenes. So I'll kind of just read a couple of these lines just to give you guys an idea of what's actually going on. But basically this ICO fits into a larger trend in the token space of existing companies that have struggled with their revenue model, pivoting to blockchain in an attempt to attain profitability. Um, in the past, pre-existing tech companies with venture backing have launched ICOs, but this is the first long-standing consumer product to do so. And I don't really want to get into, you know, they make headphones and wiring and all sorts of other stuff, but they, uh, I don't really want to get into like what their, their ICO is ultimately going to do. I just found it really interesting because as a part of the plan, Monster will create 500 million tokens and sell as many as 300 million in its offering. The offering will last one year and basically yada, yada, yada. It says the company is also issuing 75 million shares of common stock. So that way, if the network fails to launch, it can exchange every four tokens for one share of stock in lieu of returning the money. So notably, the token does not come with equity or voting rights. Instead, it is designed as a payment method for the e-commerce website, which is under construction, um, one with faster settlement and lower fees than existing payment rails, um, blah, blah, blah. But basically this is kind of interesting because they're actually launching this ICO with sort of like a the infusement of, of their own common stock shares. And I just thought this was kind of an interesting avenue that maybe we will start to see a little bit more of in the coming you know months or years when crypto sort of hits a little bit more mainstream. I just thought that this this like one line right here was pretty interesting. Um, obviously, this is not, you know, it's in lieu of, of returning the money so they don't have to. It'll just have to do with their their shares. They'll give out their shares. And at that point, if, if this ICO fails, they're probably going bankrupt. And, you know, these 75 million shares will be worth nothing anyway. But, um, you know, it even says down here, the amount of future losses and when, if ever, we achieve profitability or uncertain. So, you know, proceed with caution with this one, but I'm just, I'm just interested in, in how these big firms and these big companies that are already, you know, maybe sitting on the, the S&P 500, maybe even companies like Amazon, right? They're, they're diving into the crypto world and there's a lot of other companies that are doing the same thing, Microsoft and IBM and kind of how maybe if they do an ICO, which I doubt those, those major firms will, but, Maybe, maybe even some mid cap size companies will, will do something like this and, and maybe they'll, they'll issue, you know, a stock backed by, by a crypto. You know, who knows what's going to happen, but I just thought this was kind of interesting and food for thought that I wanted to bring up. So get, get the wheels turning. Um, with that said, I think that's all I want to go over in this video. If the USDT settings didn't make a ton of sense, hit the discord. We'll, we'll talk about it in there. I have, you know, a really good group of people in there who are constantly talking about all sorts of stuff. Um, and I'm in there quite a bit. So I appreciate everybody who's helping out in there. Um, also, don't forget, I'm giving away that $100 worth of Bitcoin. So please comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow this thing as fast as possible. Um, and then you got to be in the Discord as well to be entered into that. So with that said, everybody, I will catch you in the Discord. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy.